Alright, welcome back to Life in the Plains here in Wildlife Trek, my franchise build here in Planet Zoo. So today is a big day. Today, we're putting in the lions. Today is Big Cat Day. I love big cats. Don't have any in the zoo at all. So, I am super excited to get them in. They're going to go right in here in this area. It uh, should be plenty big enough for them. I'm going to put the backstage management area off of here. Um, put something else here. Um, let me put the aardvarks right there. Yeah, put the aardvarks there. And then, like, a guest plaza restaurant gift shop thing. I know we already have a restaurant over there, but uh, we'll fill that space with something. Anyways, lions. They're going to go right here. Actually, I may move this path a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. Um, first thing. First off, get started. Um, I want this to be a really open viewing area for the guests. I don't want there to be a lot of barriers. Uh, I like using terrain as a barrier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a moat out this way. Uh, just be a dry moat. I'm going to cut it kind of into here because I want there to be uh, room for the guest path uh, so I can get the guests off the main path to come in and view the lions. Hopefully this is going to be big enough. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to move this path. That is fine. Not dealing with paths and water or anything like that. And bring that up there. Get back up to 8 meters. And turn the curve on. I want there to be a good amount of space for them because I want to have a fairly large lion pride. But I want it to be off of in this section here rather than putting them down here where there is um, more space because I want the guests to be able to look from here at the lions and then see the, uh, the large herbivore section as well so that it kind of gives the illusion that they're all in the same habitat even though obviously they're not, they're separated. Make that a little bit wider. Fill in the old moat here. Now before I start putting the barriers in, I want to check uh, the Zoopedia here. Let's see our space requirements for them. Uh, natural habitat, there we go. So 705 square meters, that's for one of them. So obviously if we have multiples, you know, more lions, that'll go up. There is a, a uh, workshop item that is very, very useful for determining scale. And let's see if I can find it here. It should all be unlocked. I think I've unlocked everything. Uh, size, there it is. Here it is. So this is by Forumtastic. I'm going to just stick this off over here. Will it let me put it? So it's, no, okay, I can't do that. So it's out of the... Uh, I'll just put it up here. Where's the boundary? There it is. Put it right here. What these are, um, <laughs> he has, uh, they've gone and created circles and squares that correspond to different sizes. So everything 250 square meters suitable for something like pangolin all the way up to 3,000 square meters. Yeah, this is this is amazing, especially for somebody like me who struggles a little bit with um, with spatial awareness, spatial things. So I can come in here, I can kind of set this here, and then I can get an idea of, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of close. So now I can see where I actually need to do a little bit more. 
And there's going to be a functional backstage, so they will be able, there'll be a little bit more space over here for them. But I think that's pretty darn good. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit over here. Now I'll have to get the lions in here. Oh, we got a zebra about to inbreed. No, no inbreeding. You, you know what? Uh, you're 22. Okay, we're you. So you actually need to go be released. You, okay. All right, no more inbreeding. And tickets are underpriced. Well, I can fix that. Uh, we'll bump that up to 30 and up to 25. Okay, so right now this is a fairly decently sized habitat. It, or at least it will be once I put the barriers in. Uh, should be suitable for a decent sized lion pride. Um, where should the keeper gate go? Yeah, I might as well just put it off of the path that I already have right here, just to keep it simple. Yeah, that works. Um, yeah, I'll just go with the, uh... Why won't you connect? Oh, you'll connect there. I'll just go with the brick for now, and then change it once I, uh... Okay, totally lost my train of thought there. Wow. I'll change it once I actually get the, um... Get the walls and stuff in. There we go. Words. Words are hard today, apparently. And then I'll just run our null barrier through the moat. I want to get the cats in immediately. Uh, that way I can check and see if we have escape points, and then I'd like to see how the animals utilize the space before I start building. Seems to kind of... There we go. Seems to kind of help me get it built out that way. So let's see what I have in storage. I think I already have a lion in here from... There we go. Why was it? Why is it filtered to eval? There we go. Uh, from my uh, breeding zoo. Yeah. Okay. So I have. Uh, uh, yeah, she's fine. Uh, she's not worth selling on the marketplace. So we'll get her in. And actually, I did still want that screen. I want to see if we have a male to go with her. There we are, West African Lion. Hmm. I think we'll just start out with the pair, just the male and the female, and then let them breed. Okay, he's not too expensive. Still got a terrible longevity gene, though. I don't want to spend too, too much for the first lion. Let's see what else we have. Okay, he's not too bad. Um, age, he's five years old. Let me filter this by age, and then uh, just males in that way. I want something that's fairly young that's gonna last a while. Okay, that one's terrible. Twelve hundred. Three years old. Yeah, we'll get him. And we'll put him in. 
And, fantastic, they have brought our lioness in and we have ostriches fighting. Go, go away and stop fighting. And there's still too many. Alright, you know what? You, you, you can go be wild too. Let's pause the game. Click on her. And then take a look at our habitat. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yes! You can get out everywhere. Oh, dear. This is a problem. So, I'm just going to leave the game paused and fix this. First up is this fence is too low, and I knew that didn't didn't bother to actually fix that problem. Uh, we'll bring that up four meters is probably good for a big cat. It could probably be shorter, but four meters works well. And then let's see. So I'll unpause it briefly. Pause it again. That just lets the game recalculate. And click on her again. Okay, so we fix the one side. Oh boy. It looks like there's just... No, there's not just one spot where she can get down, she can jump. Okay. So to fix that... Make the moat deeper! It's plenty wide enough so she can't... Uh, she can't jump across here, but it is far too shallow, it looks like. So let's see if that did any good. Oh, look at that. Just that minor little adjustment. Perfect. Plenty of space. And so now I no longer need that, so I'll get rid of that. And we'll fix the terrain. Looks like... Okay, has Frontier never seen a picture of the Serengeti or anything? That long grass requirement is just stupid. amount of rock for whatever weird reason. But we can do that down here in the moat. It won't be as obvious. We still want more rock than that. There. And then soil. Which soil makes sense. We'll do soil back here, because that's where the backstage is going to go. It'll be roofed in, and obviously there won't be grass with a roof over it. And move it in here. Make it look like there's some trails where the animals typically walk. No hard shelter at the moment, but that'll be coming as I build out the backstage. Uh, their little night house or bedroom area. And plants are fine. Uh, let's get them some enrichment or her some enrichment. Uh, actually, I can. I uh, will get this in first. And then I'll unpause it. We'll get her a froze blood pumpkin. A scratching post. And that's good for now. We'll unpause it. Now, right now, it's just really flat and really plain. Oh, pause it again. One thing to do is set up the work zone. So, we'll get a keeper. Plop the keeper down right there. And then we'll make the work zone, and we have a keeper hut and a staff room right here, so that's perfect. Don't have to buy any more buildings. Now there is a keeper hut, and now that alert will go away. Okay. 
And I want to add another. Oh, let's see. What am I doing with this? There we go. Really? Rope strut. That, that's just annoyance. Keep a path around the outside. There we go. That just gives the staff another path to get to there, so that way they can kind of go through and use it as a shortcut instead of going around this big area too. Yeah, I'm gonna need something else over here. Maybe put the hyenas over there, or maybe the wild dogs. Alright, so the lions are in. They look good. I want to put down a feeding tray for them because I don't want them uh, eating in the dirt. Actually, that's too close. But that's going to go over there. Now, right now, this is just a really flat, kind of empty habitat, and the lions don't seem to mind, but I want to spruce it up a little bit and make it a little bit more visually interesting for me, if not for them. So first up is I want to raise up the terrain in places just a little bit. Oh, they need water. That's something that could go in. They need a water feature. I'll put that right here. Uh, so I'm going to build this out with fake rock uh, to kind of hide the wall and the keeper door. And we'll go with that. They are going to need a heater before I do anything else. I'll put that over there. So they don't have... Okay, let's give them a... Uh... Yeah, that'll work. Give them a temporary shelter for that. That way they just have some place to go that is out of the weather. So what I want to do is put in a fake waterfall. Since we have these, these awesome new pieces. I love these so much. So, let's see, I'll put that there. Turn off angle snap or align to surface. Actually. And that right there. And just little out a little pond. It doesn't need to be huge. Just enough that they can go in and get a drink. Maybe cool off if they want to. Alright.
Welfare has attracted protesters. Okay, everybody has heaters. Everybody is capable of going in their shelters and using them. Yes. Everyone can actually go in their shelters. If they're not going in their shelters, well, that's like this one. That's their problem. That's not my problem. The animals in this game do actually seek shelter when it's cold and nasty. So, if they're not seeking shelter, well, that's, that's for them. So I want to try to match the color of our fake rock to our desert rock as much as possible. A little bit. Oh, that's pretty close. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that's pretty close to the desert rock. I like to use the desert rock instead of the savanna rock for this because it's just a little bit more of a neutral color. The savanna rock I feel is a little bit too red sometimes. So I gotta remember not to block off the keeper hut completely here. I do want to make sure that it is well hidden from view and that this is well. Well disguised, it looks good.
Alright, welcome back to Life in the Plains here in Wildlife Trek. So, African lions are in. Specifically, our West African lions. It's a fairly simple habitat. Uh, unfortunately, the plant requirements are so, so ridiculously low for them that I just can't go all out the way that I really, really want to. Um, but works out pretty well. We have a little implied backstage here. Um, these would be um, what are either termed bedrooms or night facilities or backstage, uh, basically where the cats are housed after dark when the zoo is closed. Uh, yeah, so did kind of fulfill my goal, which was to have it appear uh, just a little bit that the lions and the uh, large savanna habitat back there were all one continuous habitat. So it's just hidden uh, kind of creatively. I could probably actually just raise the terrain up there just a little tiny bit and make that a better view. But like I've said before, with the uh, these sparser habitats that can't be planted, planted up as much, the trick to getting them to look really good is to really plant up the outside. Let's take care of this really quickly. Oh, that's the interior of an yala. <laughs> uh, solve that. I think that is solved. We still just have the one lone female buffalo because there, there just aren't any male buffalo on the market. Go away, it's solved. Yeah, so planting up the exterior of the habitat as, as a contrast to the interior really... Oh, we have an issue going on in here. That's right, we had cubs. Okay, it said in said fighting, but they're they're not fighting. Okay. Masood is our original boy. He came to us from London Zoo. Alright. Go. Go be released. And then did we have a female? Yes we did, so we need to put her on contraceptive so she doesn't breed. And this is our Yep, there she is. I need a little bit more enrichment. Yeah, the trick to making these sparse exhibits look a lot better is to plant up the outside, decorate it up a lot, have it be a contrast to the interior. So, so we have our um, moat here. It's a little extreme, but it works. Um, done here, these are brambles. Uh, these are what I would term defensive planting. Basically, if someone decides to hop the fence because they want to go try and play with the lions, like that one woman in the Bronx Zoo did a few years back. Um, you can see the video of that. It's insane. And it's insane. Um, yeah, they're going to land the brambles and they're not going to get very far before security can drag them out. So, I wanted to go ahead and plant this up with some uh, African trees, kind of stick with the theme. Can't do as much in the habitat, so we did more on the outside. So all in all, it worked out pretty good. I'm liking it a little bit. I left the back here kind of funky, because it's not guest-facing. It's going to be funky. It's going to be a little weird. You know, it's... The zoo's money is going toward this area. It's going toward creating this scene. All of this toward putting in the fake rock wall, the fake waterfall, all of this. This is where all the money goes. And to the care of the animals as well. The backstage is utilitarian and, well, funky. <laughs> it's just, uh, but it works. Uh, getting the fences to actually cooperate with the elevation changes in here was uh, difficult, to say the least. But it worked out pretty well. It put in a little climbing structure for them, even though in-game African lions... Really? Injury? Uh, African lions don't have a climbing requirement in-game. They do climb a little bit. They can climb trees. And uh, most zoos, they do have some sort of climbing structure for them in their habitat, even if it's just a simple little three-tiered thing that they can get up and down on, and they can sit up there and you know, survey their domain. So yeah, that is the lion habitat.
and it's our first big cat here in the zoo. I'm thrilled. I love the big cats. Lion King was like my favorite, favorite movie growing up. I watched that so many times. So, next up, I need to tackle this big empty space here. I think the aardvarks and warthogs are going to go over here, so that'll be fun. It'll be a little bit of a contrast from doing these big habitats to some smaller ones. That is what will be coming up next. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. If you'd like to be notified when I post a new video, uh, hit that bell notification button and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I do try to get back to every single commenter, and I really do appreciate it.